Now let's explore the additional roles here. Cool. These are people or sources of information that will influence the direct players. So their influence is indirect, but is not to be ignored. Let's define who the, the functions and potential players in this. It starts with the, the first and most important one of this group is the influencers. These are people that the, the economic buyer, the end user, and the champion refer to to get information about this. They could be websites, they could be TV shows, they could be, it could be Oprah on TV, it could be consumer reports. Yeah. They can be heavy influencers or they can be lighter influencers. Usually there's one that's the highest influence. For example? Yeah, so if you're going to a restaurant, you are heavily influenced by the reviews of other people. This has been shown to be a very heavy influencer. So that's the number one influencer when you go in to look at restaurants. Your friends might be influencers as well, whether they like it, but often they are not as powerful a reference or influencer to the, to the primary role, you know, buyer, user, and champion yeah. as the reviews are. Or if you're buying medication, the doctor would be a heavy influencer. Right, right. In that case. Right. And your, you know, your family might be a, a secondary influencer that's not as important, but both influence indirectly the primary people so that they then will make a decision or not make a decision to buy your product. The next one after influencers is people who have veto power. So people who have veto power can stop the purchasing process. They're not going to use it. They're not going to champion it. They're not going to... Um, you know, pay for it. Who Meaning they can block. The yes, deal from exactly. They're not going to get it going. They're almost the anti-champion. They're not going to get it going. But if they say no, then it just stops. And there are people who have explicit, they have to sign off on it to say yeah. that this is going. Or it might just be de facto veto power, yeah. like the CEO of the company. Right. If people feel like if he gives, you know, if he gives off vibes that we don't, we shouldn't be doing this, then it won't happen. So veto holders are usually either people at the top of the hierarchy or people who hold critical functions, for example, the IT department. Let's say we want to get software here and they can say, look guys, this is not secure for MIT. Yes, and, and this leads to a specific version of the, you know, the, the, the veto function, which is kind of regulatory or compliance. You know, often companies have certain compliance requirements to buy the product. standards. Yeah, or simply we only buy Macintosh, you know, operate Apple products. We only buy Windows products. These are standards and they make sense because it makes it easier for the company to support them. But you, and when you sell your product, you need to understand those compliance and those people who are going to influence the, the, the process. So um, it might be a regulatory thing. You need to have 35 miles per gallon if you're selling to a certain customer. This is very helpful to know because you can spend a lot of time trying to sell a deal and then if you don't fit the standards, then you wasted all this time. Absolutely. Have we considered all the regulatory compliance issues? So we don't do all this work and get it vetoed by someone like that. Is there anyone else in the additional roles? There's a special veto you know, kind of consideration in the purchasing department. The purchasing department, sometimes people say, well, they're the economic buyer because they signed the check. Uh, this is not true. The, the purchasing department works for the, the, the business unit that's actually generating the value. Yeah. And they're a service department that's basically there to approve it and try to drive the price down. You don't want to sell to them. You really want to sell to the end user because that's where the yeah. value is created. And this, the purchasing department, you just want to neutralize. They're what will crossing make the T's and dotting the I's. Exactly. And yeah. what will make them happy is not just the compliance, but trying to drive the price down. Yeah. That's not in your interest. So you have to understand, the purchasing department is a group that kind of has veto power. And when someone has veto power, you don't want to oversell to them. You're just there to neutralize them and to make them happy. Now, if they can advocate for you in some way or get you some information, it might be worth it. But generally, you want to just neutralize them. So the, the primary is the uh, economic buyer, the end user, and the champion. These additional roles are these you know, bigger influencers, lesser influencers, someone who has veto power over it, yeah. and then you also have the purchasing department. Those, in summary, are the decision-making units.